Okay, 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 what's the name of that song? <laughs> oh, who said? Thank you, thank you, the entertainer. Who wrote that song? I love you guys already. <laughs> you know something? Um, 1902, that was written in 192, 114 years ago. How many songs have made the journey from 192 to 2016 that everybody knows the name, everybody knows the composer? It's astonishing. It's a, I'm amazed it became a hit in 192. In fact, you know something I'll tell you. This is the first piece of music, first first piece of early 20th century ragtime music that I learned how to play. I, I heard it. I saw you know Robert Redford and Paul Newman. You know, outsmarting Robert. Shaw. How about you, Reg? Where did you hear this? Uh, ice cream trucks. Ice cream. It's a good cream humor man. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I love. I, I have to share this story because and, and Reg, I hope you're not embarrassed by me sharing this. But uh, uh, or do you want to tell them yourself? Oh, no, okay. You, you. Okay. As I had, okay, legend. Okay, I, I learned it from. A, I had a cassette of of the, the the sting. That's where I learned it. And I thought Scott Joplin, who's he? And um, Reginald, you know, the good humor man, he happened to be on I don't know Fifty Second Street one day, and you you heard you know you know the little computer sound, right? It's and and you asked the driver. Okay, he said what what, what the, 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 in between? Uh, I'll have some sprinkles. And what's what what song is that? I don't know. It's ragtime, ragtime. Right time, right time, right. And he said it over and over, right on the way home. Uh, right time. Oh you, no. almost, you almost forgot it. Oh no, no. It was. I was in. I was in seventh grade. Yeah. And uh, well, I heard that this song, the song on the ice cream, uh, ice cream truck when I was a, you know, child, coming up. And um, I didn't. I never knew what the name of the song was. I never knew uh, that it was ragtime music or any anything like that. You know, I just, um, I just knew I recognized the song. But uh, one day we, I was at school, seventh grade, and some musicians visited my school. And it turned out to be Orbert Davis and a group of musicians that were visiting, working with, for a, with a city-funded arts program. And uh, they had a program called From Bach to Bebop. And they introduced the song. That was the song in the middle, uh. about the middle of the, the uh, program. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, it was, this is style is called Ragtime. And I was like, oh, Ragtime. OK, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how it happened. OK, that's, yeah. I stand corrected. But still, uh, nonetheless, this was it's interesting that this very same song was the one that let us here. I mean, we, I, I pretty much pursued that. Reg pursued it. And um, 
I remember uh, I actually watched you record the album The Strong Man. I watched because it happened in about three hours. <clears throat> Went to the recording studio. I thought he's going to do maybe two or three songs, and he ends up doing seventeen songs flawlessly, if mostly of your own music. I'd say everything except for the Maple Leaf Rag, yeah. all your own. And the album was called The Strong Man. The Strong Man. And the origin of this title was. <laughs> I don't know. I was just thinking about some guy in a circus, like 1905. <laughs> so here's a guy in a circus, 1905, and everything ends up having a sort of, yeah, a, the, the imagery is painted uh, through the music. And so this is the strong man. Thank you. That was The Strong Man, written by Reginald Robinson in uh, 1990? 90. You yep. tell me. You, get, you know the years of all this. Stuff. Oh, yeah, 1990. 1990. <laughs> so he's, uh, you were 17? Oh, yeah, 17. Yes. <laughs> when I was 17, when I was 17, I think I was pl playing um, Beatle Records backwards and sniffing <laughs> Tester's model airplane glue, and Reginald is writing masterpieces like this. <laughs> And, and also getting hip to uh, the music, uh, some stride music as well. Um, we're going to do a number by Fats Waller and Andy Razaf from yeah. 
about 1930. 1930, was it? yes. Yeah. Was this part of that? Um, and there were very few dual piano acts, but there were a few. There was uh, the the Clarence Williams, James P. Johnson, and Fats Waller and James P. I learned yesterday. Every time I talk to Reg, I gotta I gotta set you up for this. Every time I talk to him, he introduces me to maybe three, four, five people I've never heard of before. And he'll say, "Oh yeah, that was um, the guy from Ghana." It was a uh, uh, E.T. Mensa. E.T. Mensa, and for example, yeah. and and. <laughs> He teaches me every time. It's like it's like the the best the best like librarian friend you ever knew, and he oh, knows God. everything about everybody. And and I learn from him, and it's no. it's a pure joy to be with him. So we're gonna do a Thank Fats Waller tune right now. This is um, keep a song in keep your a soul, song in right? your soul. Yes.
And I never heard that song until two months ago, Reg. Uh, I learned it from him. I learned, uh, in fact, most of the songs that we're, I'm going to play today, that we're going to play together today, I learned from Reginald. So um, he's, he's had a, a, a profound influence on, on my playing and my uh, whole oh. feeling about music and, <laughs> and research. Um, the first song I ever heard of yours playing on the radio on the Dick Buckley show back in 1992. On a Sunday afternoon, you remember that show? Oh, what a show. God, I, I'd love to have for those in, uh, I wish I should have taped every one, um, was this next piece. And then long before Lady Gaga uh, had a song called Poker Face, we had a song called... Poker Face Blues. Yes. <laughs> Predates it by 20 years plus, okay? <laughs> Now, isn't that a better song than Lady Gaga's? What do you think? I think it is. I think it is. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to play a song written in 1989. I think it's the, uh, yeah. I think it's the earliest uh, number we're going to play of yours on the yeah. show. So he was yeah. 16? Yeah, 16. <laughs> Boy, what my misspent youth. I should have been busy doing stuff like this. It's a tune in the key of, of G flat, and it goes to C flat, which keys are no problem for you. You just any, any key you want, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is now Scott Chaplin named a lot of his tunes after flowers and tr plants. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and that was a, that was the reason why I wrote, named this one after Petunia, Petunia Rag. The Petunia Rag. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. yeah so here we go.
Thank you. Oh, uh, okay. This next piece I'm going to play for you uh, is a tune that I wrote in uh, 1996. And I was thinking about uh, like the uh, New Orleans Mardi Gras and uh, the, the Indian uh, procession. And I also was thinking about some of those tunes that were published in the teen years. The uh, uh, all these tunes like Flying Arrow and Navajo and, you know, with the Indian titles, Indian Intermezzo and all that, you know. And um, so this one I call uh, The Tomahawk, an Indian War, subtitled. And um, there's one part when it's like an Indian call in it. Uh, and so when you hear that, you, you, recognize, you may recognize what that is. Yeah. Um, anyway, The Tomahawk from 1996. Tell us about the next number we're going to play. Oh, uh, this one is uh, from last year. Actually, it was um, commissioned by another MacArthur fellow, Sandra Cisneros, uh, writer of the House on Mango Street and so many other books. Um, we, got to, we worked together. Uh, um, she commissioned me to make some music for um, uh, based upon chapters in her book, The House on Mango Street. This chapter is, uh, is a chapter called The Monkey Garden. And... Um, uh, Esperanza, who's a leading uh, uh, character in the story, talks about her, uh, uh, you know, situation with uh, the neighbors next door and the monkey and all this stuff, <laughs> all the issues with the monkey and the noise and from the neighbors and all that. So I try to put it in the music, and uh, so it's a I call it a Latin polka, you know. So, <laughs> so uh, you may hear some some things like little monkey type sounds in here throughout. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, it's called Monkey Business. <laughs> yes.
you hear all the screeches and all the climbing and all the stuff. Very, very uh, nice, nice visual. <laughs> Nile River Ripples. Um, I'm going to play a piece now written by a guy who's about my age. His name is Louis Mazetier, and he's an anesthesiologist in Paris during the day. <laughs> and at night, he turns into a stride piano player. He named this piece for uh, one of his idols, Willie the Lion Smith. The name of this song is written in 1991. Again, they're still writing them like this in our lifetime. It's called Look Out Lion, I've Got You. Thank you very much. I'm going, to play, I'm going to play three very brief pieces, and if anybody in this room can tell me who wrote all three, because it was the same person. Okay. Very much influenced by, all the, by the stride piano players and certainly by the ragtime players he grew up listening to in New York City. Impromptu in two keys, and it's just like I, I, it's a piece I'd like to hear performed by a lot of people because it's one of my favorite things. I just love the fact that it's in two keys at the same time. 1924, I guess people were experimenting a little bit. Um, four years later, the same composer wrote this piece uh, called Mary Andrew.
And the third a little little piece um, is something called the three. Does anybody have any wild guess for who wrote this stuff? Absolutely correct. George Gershwin. When he was uh, not writing songs for, for Tin Pan Alley and for Broadway shows or for later movies, he was writing little incidental piano pieces, like impromptu and two keys is something left over from uh, Rhapsody in Blue and you know, maybe. And Mary Andrew was like a little scene changer, as I understand it. I guess in Treasure Girl, they were moving some, this is the celebration of low tech days. They were kind of moving the scenery around. And somebody, a guy named Andrew scampered around or something for a minute and 15 seconds. <laughs> Well, they played this thing that sounded like they all laughed on Christopher Columbus. You know. And the final one I'm going to play by, by George was something called the Three Quarter Blues. Uh, the date is unknown for this one. I remember having a record by William Balcom when I was a kid, and I got hip to this. Mainly because um, he, he did some rags. And, and, and again, my interest in rags happened about the same age as you. I was about maybe 12, 13, and when that sort of dawned on me that this was something that I guess I, guess, I, guess I could do if I had the athleticism to do it, because it's a, a kind of a demanding thing. But this is a very simple piece by Gershwin called um, the Three Quarter Blues. There are no words, but there should be some. And uh, we're going to play another tune of Reginald's. And this is for your uncle, right? Yes. Tell, tell me all about this song. Well, uh, it's named Mr. Murphy's Blues. And uh, Mr. Murphy's daughter actually happens to be here tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um, this song was written uh, for my uncle, Leroy Murphy was his real name. And um, uh, it was a tune written in honor of him because he uh, helped me locate a piano. And uh, the place I was, able, I was actually able to, you know, get a job there uh, was on 77, the National Piano Shop, Fields Piano and Organ Company. And um, I wrote this in 1997 and uh, tried to incorporate some of the musicians in it that he, he told me he liked uh, back in that, in the 1920s. People like Herschel Thomas and uh, Jimmy Blythe are, are in this, you know, style are in this tune. So uh, Mr. Murphy's Blues. Thank you. 
John is amazing, <laughs> amazing piano player. I wanted to I, I wanted to show the audience something here, and I, and I hope you don't mind, John. Uh, I just wanted to uh, let you in on what I've what I experienced when I first met John, the kind of person he is, and his ear. Uh, I just want to give you an example of, of just how phenomenal he is. Um, I'm going to play a chord, and I'll, you can see what he you exactly know what exactly what I'm doing on that end. <laughs> yeah, amazing. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Well, the, the uh, I'm gonna move, move on to the next song. Oh yeah, why not? Yeah. Oh, you want? I could play something. Do something. This next tune we're going to play is um, a tune that I wrote in uh, 1992, and I call it The Jester. Next, um, we're going we're to play a piece, the first piece I ever heard Reginald play live. Um, this is at Mac Olson's house. I remember I was pulling my car up, and I, I swore there were two people playing the piano. I heard the music coming out of the window. I was like, oh, my God. What, you know. And um, this is a piece that you wrote, I want to say, about 1990 or 17? 17? Um, wow. So um, there's one particular part. Can I, can I actually give a, a, a yeah. there's one yeah. section here that I, when I heard it, I thought, this guy is the real deal. This, there's the, 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 the trio, the third theme goes something like this. Goes. and it's so compositional, I was just, I was, I was like, 
getting like misty eyed. I said, I wish I'd, I'm going to steal that somehow. <laughs> some way. It's so cool. And then, and then. Uh, and then. 17 years old, I wasn't writing anything like that. It was so cool. I, I got I to gotta give it up for you, man. I, Thank I, you. I was sold. <laughs> you had me at. <laughs> It's so cool because it's it's so Joplin-esque. It's so idiomatically correct. And how could you possibly know this of being a guy born in the 1970s? This can't possibly be. But it was it was it it won me over. Uh, so let's do uh, this is a piece called finesse. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I have not played that piece in, in public in so long. I mean, just a long time. I don't usually play it in my concert, so I'm very pleased to be able to play it for you tonight. Um, the piece that I'm going to play for you now uh, is uh, one I was commissioned to write in uh, 2006. And I was commissioned by the uh, MacArthur Foundation for a retiring member named Jack. And uh, it's called Footloose. I was thinking about. Uh, Trying to, you know, make it. I was trying to come up with a uh, really clever way of saying uh, retirement, but in, in, a, in a fun dancing, danceable type. I guess I don't know if that's the word. <laughs> a, a really dance like way. So I, I thought about footloose, and um, I was thinking, well, footloose, uh, you know, it's a way of saying free to go, move about, and you know, in a, in a dance. And I incorporated some different pianist styles in here, like um, a little uh, uh, Willie the Lion Smith and, and uh, a guy named Blind Leroy Garnett, who I was listening to. There, I don't think there's so much uh, information about Blind Leroy Garnett, but he, I think he was from Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana. And um, anyway, he uh, had this uh, little 
technique that he used where he would do like a um, uh, barrel house boogie left hand, which alternated back and forth between that and a stride left hand. So, I mean, he just alternated, so I put that in here. And uh, so anyway, Footloose from 2006. Thank you. There you go. It's it's beyond the point of jealousy, okay? <laughs> but it's 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 we've been, we've been pals for for uh, 20, 24 years, and and it's just uh, I I never get tired of hearing hearing you do what you do. We have a lot of thank yous, uh, Thomas Souls. I, I can't believe you've uh, you've put this together, Reginald. You put this together with him. Darcy, Amber, the Giovanna. Uh, Victor, our great engineer, who's made the sound sound so nice. There's so many people I recognize in this room. There's so many luminaries here. I just, I, I, I think I'm the only person here I've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, we're gonna do something. Uh, we're gonna play a piece. Um, and again, Joplin named all his, uh, a lot of his pieces after plants. And what was up with that anyway? Why was he into botany anyway? I, I'm, just... I'm not sure. I'm but, not sure. But this particular one's kind of special. This one was not in the sting, for starters. I learned this piece of music. I learned, actually, um, just about everything I've played today from you, okay? Just, oh, just, okay. just so you know. I learned this one because we had a gig, and we had to do it. And I said, well, how does it go? And he played it for me. Oh, okay, I think I could, I could probably do that. And, and Peach Reen Rag, which is the title of the song, it's a tree, but it's also... It, it's a slang. Yeah, like turn of the 20th century yeah. slang for like a good looking woman. Yeah. Is that what he's? Yeah. <laughs> he, I, I can't help but love Scott Joplin just a little bit more for sneaking that one under the radar. It's, <laughs> can you believe? And yeah, they, they got away with uh, some, some wonderful, wonderful stuff. Yeah. Um, anyway, okay, so this is um, a, a piece of the, the final piece in regulation called, uh, called the Peacherine Rag from 1901. Yes. Ask Reginald if you're in doubt. He knows these things. <laughs> Thank you.
Gee, what could we follow that up with? Um, maple leaf. Maple leaf rack, yes. So make believe rack. <laughs> make believe. <laughs> for turning me on to this music like, again because I'd kind of lost sight of it for a while and, and you kind of brought me back into it. So thank, thanks a lot. And you should have watched this guy record his first record. I was there. I, I watched it happen in three hours. I said, no way. I thought three songs maybe, 17 songs he did in, in about three hours. Just sat down and played without a single mistake. So, so he's the one to watch. You know, I, I just you know I get kind of emotional talking about this, but it's just it's just it's really it's really it, it gladdens my soul when somebody a lot younger than me is is going to carry on this kind of music long after the, I'm you know you know <laughs> ninety nine and you know toppling down the stairs with a you know icy pain in my chest. Um, anyway, thank you so so much. I, I don't know what that was at all, but. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's, it's a long way off. That's, uh, I'm 55, so it's uh, 99 is 44 years off. Thank you so much. We love this music. We love all of you. And, and we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you all. And we, there's CDs for sale. Whoops. Did I say that? I love something. Stocking stuffers, you know. Um, nothing says uh, ho, ho, ho like uh, a disc. Thank you so much, everybody. So. Thank you. Thank you.